The first reading is from Zephaniah chapter 3. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing, as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you, so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcasts. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at that time I will, when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll read a psalmody from Isaiah chapter 12 responsively. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the nations. Proclaim that this name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord who has done gloriously. Let it be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able for our gospel. of eternal life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And then the crowds asked him, What then shall we do? In reply, John said to them, Whoever has two coats must share one with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. 
as the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to each of you this day from the one who was, who is, and who is to come, Jesus Christ. Amen. In some Advent traditions, this third Sunday of Advent is known as Gaudete Sunday. And I will turn to our Latin scholar who is here today. Did, he, did I say that kind of right? Gaudete. Okay, very good. And when you translate that from the Latin, it means rejoice. Rejoice. We know that Advent is a season of waiting. So today we are called to be joyful as we wait as we wait the coming of Jesus Christ, as we wait the coming of salvation to God's people, the coming of a new and unheard of liberation of people who are enslaved to sin, the coming of good news of great joy that is God's mercy and God's love incarnate. While we wait, we are invited to rejoice, which I have to admit is easier knowing whom we await. But even for those who do not yet know Jesus, the prophets of the Old Testament offer God's people an invitation to rejoice. God, through Zephaniah, offered glimpses of a hopeful future and called God's people to Rejoice and exalt with all our heart. Isaiah reminded his hearers of the ways that God had delivered people in the past. He reminded them of the ways that God was delivering them. And then he reminded them that God will deliver them in the future. And Isaiah invited people to shout aloud and to sing for joy because they will draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And finally, from our readings this morning, Paul, the apostle, strongly urged the church to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, he will say, rejoice. I don't know about you, but there are some times when it is hard to rejoice. When rejoicing in a weary world is difficult. You've probably been there. A loss, a deep hurt, a struggle that seemed too much to bear, mental illness, addiction, betrayal by a loved one, the search for meaning when it all just seems irrelevant. A health crisis that has changed your quality of life for the worse. There are times when it is difficult to find the will or the ability to rejoice. I think we've all experienced tough times these last couple years with the suffering, the loss, uncertainty, fear, an overall state of our beautiful and broken world. How can we hear these words and rejoice? I think our minds tend to overlap joy and happiness. 
Happiness is often connected with what happens to us and around us. I don't need to tell you that happiness is fleeting. It usually lasts for just a season. But the truth about joy is something different altogether, especially the kind of joy that Scripture describes, the joy in the Lord. It's not usually inspired by happy circumstances. And joy in the Lord, unlike happiness, may last no matter what the challenge or the circumstance of life. Prophets announced the day of the Lord's coming as a time of great joy. Even Zephaniah, and he's been called the most despondent of the prophets, although I still have a soft spot in my heart for Jeremiah. But Zephaniah kept the last word for joy. He announced joy at the Lord's presence joy at the Lord's renewal and restoration of God's people, and, yes, joy at once again coming home. While Isaiah spoke words of doom, he announced the Lord's coming as a time of rejoicing. Surely God is my salvation, Isaiah announced, that the Lord's coming would be a day when people would drink their fill from the waters of salvation, like someone drawing fresh water from a well, certain that this day would be a day of great rejoicing. Isaiah even described a joyful feast for all people to eat rich foods together. And that time, he said, would be a time of rejoicing. We heard from Paul's letter today to the church at Thessalonica, and Paul was under arrest when he wrote these words to the church. And still, Paul would say, rejoice. And we can scratch our heads in wonder that Paul could rejoice in a prison. Well, he rejoiced because he looked forward to the Lord's coming. He also rejoiced because the Lord was always near. Paul experienced the Lord's constant presence even in his imprisonment. So he could say, rejoice. Emmanuel, God with us, sustained Paul through the Holy Spirit in all these things. He could rejoice in the Lord always. And he could encourage the church to do that too. I'm grateful for people of God, the prophets, Paul, and even the people around me who can announce joy, who can share joy in the hope and the presence and the reality of God, who is salvation for all of God's people. These prophets truly prepare the way for God. They prepare a way that leads God's people to rejoice. They prepare a way that leads to salvation, to forgiveness, to eternal life. They prepare the way that leads to Jesus Christ. John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus. He lived in weary times, let me tell you, weary times. They were difficult and complicated days, days of political uncertainty and turmoil for the people of God. There was talk of insurrection and of plotting coups. People longed for leadership. They weren't sure about the king or the emperor and where it all came together. They longed for a strong leader to save them. Actually, it, it might not have been too different then from our present time. John's message to God's people was simple. Repent. Turn your lives around. Turn back to God. The prophets, the message of salvation. For in that message, John could see what God was doing. 
for those people in their worry times. For John, repentance was not about beating ourselves up for things that we had done or things that we had left done. To repent meant to be changed and transformed. John's message was simple. Repent, turn your lives around and turn back to God. Transformation, he said, bears fruit. The past was the past. God will do a new thing. In the meantime, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Now, his message was simple, but his style and his approach were unique, to say the least. He called the people who came to him a brood of vipers. He called them children of snakes. Who warned them, he asked, to flee to the city, to seek him from the city? Who warned them? And then he told them to bear fruit. He told them not to rely on their ancestry, their tradition, or their history. He told them that they were the ones to prepare for someone who is coming, someone much greater than even he. And they asked him, they asked him, not that Lutheran question, they asked him, what should we do? Lutherans like to ask, what does this mean? And I wish they were there that day to ask John the Baptist what that really meant, but, but they instead said, what should we do? And this is where John, John got a bit shocking because he didn't push the people to do difficult things. He didn't ask the people to change the world. He didn't tell them to even follow him. He didn't ask them to start a revolution. He didn't tell them to march on the Capitol and overturn a government. He didn't tell them to take up arms or fly flags. He told them to share what they have with someone who's cold and hungry. He told the people responsible for money to be honest and fair. The soldiers, he cautioned, to act with integrity, avoid abusing their power. Go home, John told the people. Go to your families and go to your neighbors and go to your vocations and go to your friends. Go and live as deeply and as generously as you can right now. Do what the Lord requires of you and do it now. Be generous now. Be merciful now. And do justice now. It really is simple. He didn't ask the people to do a lot when they asked him what they should do. Preparing for Jesus is like living a life of generosity and caring for other people around you. At the most basic, that life is not hurting or taking advantage of others. Go in peace, we might hear him say, to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace, we might hear John say, love others as God loves you. And always remember, dear friends, what God has done for you. Because God has given to you a Savior who is Christ. God has come to be with you, incarnate, with you forever. God has given hope to the hopeless and, and love to the loveless and joy to the joyless, yes, and even life to the lifeless. All of this, all of this is for you in Christ Jesus the Lord. As the hymn says, there is a thrill of hope. A weary world rejoices for yonder breaks anew and a glorious morn. May God bless you as you rejoice and wait with others for God's coming.